Hello my people, today I'm going to be talking while I drink coffee and eat ramen, Maruchan ramen, Maruchan translates to round girl, in case you didn't know, <laughs> here I'll show you the Lego, see that, Maruchan, this is the hot and spicy chicken cup ramen. Cheers to whoever invented cup ramen. I think I know that it was invented in Japanese in the 19th... Japan. Invented in Japan by a Japanese person uh, after World War II because the Americans uh, provided food aid for the Japanese um, during their occupation in the late 1940s, the early 1950s. Um, and um, there was a lot of buckwheat flour going around. Because that was what the U.S. provided them in food aid. And so this one guy, don't know his name, was like, I need a food that's delicious, stable, and easy to prepare. And boom, he came up with ramen. Well, actually, oh, 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 oh. Um, the Ramen Ninja. There's a, there's a video called The Ramen Ninja, which is like a... Um, it's like a cinematic experience of how this guy invented ramen. It took him three years to get the the ramen recipe right. It wasn't like this overnight thing where he just he just spent like a day. No man, he spent three years. He spent three years designing the ramen flavor. The ramen recipe. Three years long time to be working on a single food but look at what he came up with beautiful isn't it although I've eaten so much ramen in the past couple of years that I'm starting to get tired of it I mean I mean it's good but it's just I don't know. Not as good as it once was. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of MRE videos. And, um... It's kind of funny. Because the Israeli Armed Forces field ration contains, like, 50% tuna. Canned tuna. Like, when you open up an Israeli Armed Forces 24-hour ration, it's like can after can after can of tuna. You know, it's like, did the Israeli government find a bargain on tuna somewhere? The thing is, is that tuna has trace amounts of mercury in it. All seafood does, but... If you eat too much tuna, you have an actual chance of getting mercury poisoning. That's why the CDC recommends you don't eat that much tuna. Maybe like one serving every other day. And when I talk serving, I mean like a can of tuna. Because can't, tuna has mercury in it. And how this happens is called um, bioaccumulation. So... Bioaccumulation. Let's say water has a certain percent concentration of mercury, yeah? And plankton, they have a slightly higher concentration of mercury in them because they float around the water collecting mercury, like mercury accumulates in their bodies. Well, now the little fish comes over and eats the algae and it collects more mercury because every algae it eats the mercury collects inside of its body. And big fish eat the little fish. And tuna are actually apex predators. Did you know that? Did you know that tuna is an apex predator in the ocean? Like, we, we think of it as, like, the stuff that comes in a can, but... Tuna are on par with sharks as being, like, literal predators. They Their diet consists mostly of other fish. They're, they're carnivores. And that's, that's one of the reasons why tuna fishing is so 
so counterproductive and why, or unproductive or so destructive to the natural habitat. So bluefin tuna, which is the favorite tuna of the Jap- Japanese people, sushi tuna, um, each bluefin tuna can weigh up to 500 kilograms, which is about 1,000 pounds. Or um, I, I could be 500 pounds. I don't know, but they're gigantic. They, they are gigantic. They're like the size of a person. These bluefin tuna, they're not the kind of tuna that goes into a can, okay? Bluefin tuna are far too valuable to be turned into canned tuna. The canned tuna you find is albacore tuna, which is less endangered. So bluefin tuna, um, they grow they grow so big because they migrate across the entire ocean. It is impossible to farm bluefin tuna. In fact, it's very hard to farm any kind of tuna. But bluefin tuna especially because in order to grow, they need to swim a lot and and um they've been overfished which is something that is a serious problem because um overfishing everyone agrees that overfishing is a problem because screw the environmental impact screw like the save the fishes stuff by overfishing bluefin tuna, you're depriving your kids, your grandkids, from the pleasure of eating it, you know? I, my, I consider myself a utilitarian environmentalist. Meaning that I don't care about the environment for the environment's sake. I care about the environment because I want my future generations to actually be able to enjoy stuff. And the thing is, I don't think... We should reduce. We should. We should reduce our quality of life in order to protect the environment. I think what we should do is find new, and innovative ways to help the environment through technology. I think we should use. We should apply our brains to the solution. Okay. We should use our big brains. Like, our big brains got us here. Our big brains can get us out of it, you know? Like, have you heard of the the record heat waves on the East Coast and the West Coast? Both coasts. I mean, it hit 121 degrees Fahrenheit in Toronto, Canada. 121 degrees. Do you realize how hot that is? That is 21 degrees hotter than 100. And 100 is miserably hot. The hottest temperature I've ever been in was 108 degrees. That's the hottest I ever was outside. And by God, 108 degree weather? Absolutely miserable. Even if there is no humidity. It's just absolutely miserable. Like, you you just, you can't go outside for more than five minutes without baking in the heat. And, And these guys were handling weather that was 13 degrees hotter. Like, Jesus Christ, man. And the drought... Like, you know, I, I can't, I, I can no longer deny the effects of climate change. Because this is a, the problem is, is I disagree with liberals on how to approach climate change. I don't think, I, I really don't think we should reduce the quality of life of a major, large portion of people in order to save the environment. Um, I think we should be utilitarian about saving the environment. I think we should, like, invest in, like, carbon scrubbers and stuff, um... I'm not an expert on the environment, and I, and I need to do more research about how exactly these heat waves were caused, um, but but it is possible, well, it's probable that they were caused by human-caused climate change. Well, actually, but the thing is, is that human-caused climate change is... Well, let's put it this way. Do you know about the Great Oxygenation Event? Okay, so... So these... these, these um, before, the in, the, uh, or, before the origination of complex life, multicellular complex life, there were these... Um, there was this algae. There, there were these algae constructs, these little cells of algae that filled the Earth's proto-oceans. They were the first forms of life. And here's what happened. They produced oxygen through photosynthesis. And the thing is, is that there was no way for the oxygen 
to be filtered out of the atmosphere. Like nowadays, the oxygen balance is struck between plants who produce oxygen and animals and bacteria and stuff who consume oxygen. Well, before the oxygenation event, there, were no, there was nobody consuming the oxygen. And so what happened is these, these unicellular organisms, these colonies of algae, they killed themselves by oxygenating the environment. So here's the thing. If these algae had treated climate change the way some people are, are insisting that we treat climate change, we wouldn't exist. We are part of the earth, okay? And that doesn't just mean that we have to take care of the earth. It means that whatever we do to the earth is part of the earth's natural process. Like, even though it may seem like we are artificial, like we are not part of the earth, we are. We came from the earth. We are 100%, almost, like besides a couple moon rocks, we are almost 100% earth-derived, earth-useful. We, 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 we do stuff. Everything we've ever done has come from this planet. And that means that we can change it however we want, because it's, it's the earth. Like, you know, some people say we're one with the earth in order to reduce pollution, but, you know, we if we pollute then it's like it's just it's just we're all part of the same pie you know <laughs> and so we sure we should stop pollution pollution is bad pollution hurts people it, it hurts other people but that's i think that's the we should only care about pollution insofar as it does damage to other people <laughs> like if, if if it doesn't hurt anyone what did happen that, that's my stance on environmentalism. Um, I think that if we insist on, on like, you, you may think of a concrete jungle as unnatural, but the thing is, is that it's 100% Earth-derived. Humans have been living on Earth. We don't we don't bring in stuff from other. You know, it's just like we're part of the same pie. Like I said, we're we're part of the same pie. So we shouldn't worry about what we're doing to the environment in so far as it doesn't hurt anyone. If it does hurt people, if it does cause people suffering, then yeah, we, I I do agree. We need to fix it. But if we cause more suffering during our attempt to fix it. Then the suffering that we prevented, we we we're missing the point, you know. Like we're missing the point if we if we downgrade the 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 standard of living that most uh, Western folk are used to. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like not being able to play video games or or not being able to use the air conditioning, you know. Like I I air conditioning in video games and the internet and computers and such and cars and such there. They're an integral part of my life. I don't want to sacrifice that. But I think we were we were able to invent freaking Bluetooth out of out of rocks. We started with like rocks and trees and, and water. And we invented fucking Bluetooth. So we can we can do this. You know, we can do this without getting rid of of the quality of life that we've strived for like three hundred years to achieve, you know? We can do this. All we need to do is put our smart minds to it to fix this without causing harm you know um yeah that's it we, we can we need to we need to fix it in a way that doesn't least invasive minimally invasive so i agree that we need to fix climate change i just believe that we need to be minimally invasive about how we fix climate change we need to work with the with the functions of society so instead of overthrowing society we need to work within within the function of society, like we we don't we don't like go against the grain of our current society. We 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 go with it, and we alter its course from within. There's no need for revolution. What there is need for is technology that solves the problem. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, 
like the whole exactly i just i just i just i don't want to lose what i've what i've got i don't want to lose what i have that's that's the thing that that my 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 baseline is that i want to maintain my quality of life and also maintain the acceleration of my quality of life so everyone in the west we all have very nice lives most of us most of us have very nice lives we have some things to complain about but we always have something to complain about we have to admit most western folk and including most folk everywhere have nice lives okay i like my life i don't want it to go downhill also i realize that my life is also going uphill at the same time so i don't want to lose my standard of living and i don't want to lose the standard of improvement in my standard of living you know i'm selfish i don't want to sacrifice like this i don't want to sacrifice youtube and and anime and video games for for something intangible you know like i like i'm when, when i say intangible i say like like climate change is intangible we don't know exactly how it works we don't know exactly how it's caused we don't know exactly what it's causing and i don't want to i don't want to be punished because of my lifestyle like i'm selfish I'm honest. I'm selfish. Like, I, I really... And I think the reason why most people are afraid of climate change is because they're afraid that it may hurt them. Um, like, like in general, people are selfish. And if they pretend that they're not selfish, they're pretending most of the time. Um, well, when it, when it considers policy and strangers and power. Um, so, this guy's not falling. Um, and even if the sky does fall, we'll figure out a way. If in, I mean, in, in the case, let's let's take this as a let's go let's run with this. Let's say the sky is falling, and we know the sky is going to fall in the next year. What do we do? We invest a lot of money in building skyjacks. Like these, what we do is if the sky is falling, we figure out a way to hold the sky up. Project Atlas. Let's call it that. Project Atlas. Okay. I think that instead of instead of reducing consumption, what we need to do is figure out a way to tie consumption and technology to the solution to climate change. So somehow or another, we have to rewire our consumer habits. We have to rewire them to um, to somehow protect the environment. And and I don't know exactly how to do that, but I think. That the free market, the capitalist free market, with regulation, I, I'm, I, I think that the government and the economy should work in tandem. They should be separate, like church and state. The separation of church and state, the separation of economy and state. But we can't have we can't have the economy without the state, and we can't have the state without the economy. You have to have both, because if people are left to do whatever they want they will form a cabals and b they will pollute stuff that isn't theirs like they will dump their toxic waste into the river and harm other people so that's why we need regulation we need regulation in order to protect people from the less scrupulous the less scrupulous industrialists okay but we need to make sure that the people with the ideas and the people with the power to create new things are allowed to percolate up. What we need to do is, like now, we need to foster a community of powerful economic activity without allowing that powerful economic activity from harming, harming other people. Because if left to their own devices... Um, capitalist companies will choose the least expensive option and the least expensive option most often includes less scrupulous um less scrupulous things so you need to keep you need to keep the keep the companies honest but don't stop them from doing what they're doing and that's how you acquire that's how you achieve balance in the economy that's how you achieve economic political balance is through is through regulation um 
Mm. And it's not perfect. It's not a perfect system, but it, it, it's the best system out there. Mm. It's not. It's, it's, it's regulated capitalism. I believe that the government should only regulate business. It should not be a part of business. And that's my two cents. I'll see you guys later. Also, if you know, I got a new camera. Tell me how you like my new camera, okay? Gotcha. I'll talk to you guys later.